hello. I'm, I'm Joan Jem, and my title at Friends of the Whitworth is Programme Secretary. And the first job that I was asked to do when I joined the Tuesday team was to organise the Pilkington Lecture, which is an annual lecture which, as far as we know, has been running since 1969. Now, it's really interesting when I look at the list now. The first three speakers of the Pilkington were 1969, Sir Kenneth Clark. 1970, Sir Anthony Blunt. 1971, Sir Nicholas Pevsner. Wow, that was some start, wasn't it? And then you go further down the list, you come to Sir Isaiah Berlin, Professor Quinton Bell, talking on Marxism, and then a bit later, Richard Morphus on Bloomsbury Arts. Now, how odd, Quinton Bell wasn't talking about Bloomsbury, but there you are. We've had George Melly, 1985. Bridget Riley, the only person who's done it twice. Uh, Norman, uh, Norman St. John Stevens was booked for 1987, but he never came because he received a better offer from the Queen Mother. We know that. That's in the history, but not written down. <clears throat> we had... Dame Elizabeth Frink, Maggie Hamlin, Peter Blake, Neil McGregor, fantastic list. Anthony Penrose, and that was the first Pilkington I ever came to uh, as uh, a member of Friends of the Whitworth. I just came to the lecture and I thought, how interesting, Anthony Penrose. And then after that, then we went to Sussex on a visit and we went to visit Farley Farm. Uh, didn't meet Anthony Penrose, but it was wonderful to have heard his lecture and then go afterwards and see the farm where they all lived. The previous directors, Alistair Smith and Maria Balshaw, they, they both filled in uh, on years when Pilkington speakers didn't come at the very last minute. So we're keeping the current Alistair in reserve as well for a similar situation. 2008, Sandy Nairn uh, was the lecturer and that was my probation year. I'd actually retired in 2008 and I was working in the health service on Friday and I was working on the Tuesday team the following Tuesday. And how I, uh, how, how I was sort of instructed to run the Pilkington was they just copied me into every email that was sent and every letter. And then the next year I was on my own. Um, so I thought I had big ambitions. I thought, wouldn't it be fabulous to have Grace and Perry? Everyone said, oh, I'll never get Grace and Perry. But fortunately, a very generous person decided, offered to sponsor Grace and Perry if I could get him to agree to come. And he did. And so we had Grace and Perry in 2011. And uh, it was a fabulous day. Jill Crook and myself, um, we met him at Piccadilly Station. And he got off the train and he was wheeling his wheel, he was wearing civvies. And the first thing he said to us was, I've got a terrible hangover. I was out with the art fund celebrating last night. So we thought, oh, <coughs> doesn't sound very good. He's going to be really, really damn beat because he looked really miserable. Anyway, we dropped him off his, as his, at his hotel and then came on to the Whitworth. And two hours later, he appeared in the gallery, absolutely dressed in this fabulous costume and he'd been on his own in the hotel he must have done it dressed himself made himself up uh, and gave the most wonderful lecture it was humorous it was personal it kind of brought the roof down really and, and the thing about it was it was the last lecture we ever had in the old lecture theater before the gallery closed um so that that i think probably was the highlight really i think we've had famous people since then but it's um that was the one we'll all remember. Um, anyway, after that, I, we had Andrew Graham Dixon, and he, he was very charming. Um, got, I met him, took him to the hotel, came back here with him, and he said to me, I want a cigarette. I have to have a cigarette. So I ended up running out the road, down the shops, a package of cigarettes and a box of matches, and a member of staff had to take him out to the back garden to have a cigarette. So I again realised that even the most famous people who do it all the time, get nervous when they give a lecture. So you have to make allowances for that, so when people come. 
So I think really, um, we're thinking about the future now. Who should we have in the future? Well, in our sights, we've got perhaps Jeremy Della. Might be a good year for Jeremy Della. He's famous in Manchester at the moment. And then we've got David, David Olasuga. We thought he would really be good because the very first lecture was Kenneth Clark in 69. So we thought because very soon we'll be having the 51st Pilkington. It would be nice to have somebody else from the civilization programmes off the television. And then there's Lebena Hamid, Turner Prize winner. We must have her very soon. I thought I'd finish with the person who I have asked first every year since 2015, and who's always turned me down, Mary Beard, Professor and Dame. Well, maybe we'll try it. Maybe we'll not. <laughs>